Hey Gypsies! Welcome back to my channel. You don't know how long I've been wanting to say that. Um, I'm going to try my best to focus on the camera, the area I need to be looking at, and I just um, wanted to come on today to give you my experience over the past couple weeks, what's been going on with me, and I've got notes. I don't know how long it'll be, but I know a lot of people were wanting some updates and just, I want to give some updates. So I'm going to go ahead and just grab my paper. I got a paper here. I tried to do a little outline of everything and it's been quite an experience. So I'm just going to start from the top. First of all, I just want to say thank you. Okay, it's probably going to be an emotional video. Okay. I'm okay with that, though. I got, I got tissue. I just want to say thank you. Hold on. Okay, it's not going to be an easy video. Okay. So, I, I just did a little outline, okay? Um... So basically, this is my experience with COVID, raw, uncut, I'll try. Um, I'm going to start out by saying, I don't know where I got it, not sure. Um, I think it worked, but I'm not sure, I can't say 100%. So day one, okay? Um, so, a lot of you guys know that over the past months, I've been doing a lot of coughing. I try to blame it on my allergies. You know, a lot of you guys are like, you need to go to the doctor. You've had it too long. And so, apparently, you know, maybe uh, doctors thought that maybe I had an underlying case of possibly walking pneumonia for a little while, which probably was, you know what set this course the way it happened so um i guess i was kind of stubborn because i just kept blaming on allergies i didn't want to take the time to even think that i could have you know something going on so yeah first of all i want to say thank you to so many people that i don't know um, I know there's a lot of YouTubers, Instagrammers, Facebookers requesting prayer on my behalf, lighting candles, sending good thoughts, and I appreciate each and every single one of you guys. I don't want to call anybody out because I don't want to leave anybody out, but I know I received tons and tons of messages and it just felt so good that you guys were thinking about me. Okay. All right, so first um, I started running a fever, okay, which, you know, after all the coughing and coughing and coughing and coughing and coughing for months, started running the fever, um, I went to the ER. Um, I, of course, was coughing and didn't feel like I could breathe good, so I'm like, okay, so it's finally time to go. I felt like at that time I had maybe half of my lung capacity, which... I'm like, I probably just need antibiotics or whatever. So they did chest x-ray. That's what I posted on Facebook, Instagram too, I believe, that I had double pneumonia. The doctors said, you have double pneumonia. They did a COVID test that night too. I didn't get those results that day. So they sent me home with steroids and antibiotics and sent me home. Okay. So the next day they called and said, you have COVID. I said, okay. They said, stay home quarantine. If you have any trouble, come back. I said, okay. So two days, ran a fever, 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 diarrhea. Um, there's a, so many different, so many different side effects of it. Like, yeah. So, um, yeah, at that time I felt like I had at least half my lung capacity. I was really struggling to breathe what I thought was really struggling to breathe at that time. Okay, so 
Um, <clears throat> lots of, I mean, they would sent me home obviously with um, steroids and antibiotics and an inhaler. Okay, so two days. I feel like my lung capacity went down to um, three fourths. So I'm like, you know, I'm really not breathing good. And I'm starting to get really nervous and scared. Well, that's a scary thought right there. When you can't breathe, that's scary. So many horror stories going around about COVID and pneumonia and just, just hear it all. You hear it all. And it's scary. So I decided, my family decided to, I'm going to go back to the hospital, but a different hospital. Because... You know how if you're living in an area and there's different hospitals, people are like, oh no, this one's better, that one's better, that one will help you, that one won't. Okay, so I went about an hour away, 40 minutes away maybe, to a different hospital. Okay, so they, I told them I was COVID positive. They didn't know the chest x-ray. They came in, said, your lungs are beautiful. Your lungs are beautiful. We're going to up your antibiotic. We'll go up your steroid. We'll send you home. I said, my lungs are beautiful. I thought I had double pneumonia. So I was feeling good. I'm like, okay, my lungs are beautiful. What does that mean? Like, so went home, okay, with more, with more antibiotics and, you know, stronger and everything. Um, I just want to say, I'm going to enter, enter, I'm going to put this in there. My veins are horrible veins they are like they blow I mean I've got tons of bruises they blow like they always have like when they have to stick me for blood or anything like it's it's a it's a hard way to go for me and like I don't know if you can see yeah you can see like they blew every vein they tried to this right here was big as a, a chicken egg they they blew every vein I had, I believe. But, just showing you guys a little bit of the, I'll probably still have sticky stuff on me after showers and everything, but I just want to show you a little bit of the reality. Um, so yeah, I got poked a lot, a whole lot, and it was so painful. And let me just say, there's something called a blood gas test. So painful. I had to go to your artery. I had to have that done. I guess they got it two or three times, but they had to poke me at least ten just to get it. Just to get it. Okay, it was one of the most painful things ever. It was horrible. But I know I'm not the only one that's been through that. So anyway. Okay, so they sent me home. The next day, I'm at home. COVID. Beautiful lungs apparently. I'm like, what is this? What is I can't breathe good still. How do I have beautiful lungs? So I called back to that hospital. I'm not going to name any names. Called the hospital back. They said, I said, can you look at my chest x-ray and tell me what it said? Because, like, I was told I had double pneumonia two days ago. And then yesterday you guys say I have beautiful lungs. So the girl's like, okay, hold on. She looked, she said, your chest x-ray is totally clear. I'm like, okay. Psychologically, that felt better, but I still knew something's wrong. Something's wrong. So I waited another day. My lung capacity felt like it got down to about 10%. I can't breathe. And then I start getting anxiety. I start getting... I don't even know like once anxiety hits in when you feel like you got 10% lung like you got 5% all of a sudden you got like you know it's it's hard it's really really hard it's so hard for me to breathe so my daughter came to get me took me to the first emergency room I went to okay they decided they did another chest x-ray they did a CT make sure I didn't have any blood clots so they said we're going to keep you you got double pneumonia. I'm like, okay. I got double pneumonia. I got COVID. I can't breathe. They're going to keep me. Okay. So what they did next was something called a pick line. I don't know if you know what it is. 
saved my life. I have no doubt. Just, just literally because they can't get my blood. They can't, you know, get an IV started on me. So they came in. They did a pick line. Um, what it is, I went right here. Still a little black dot there. You can see that. It's a line that goes all the way up, all the way over to close to your heart. And they can take all the blood they need. They can give anything they need. That was the best thing that ever happened to me. It was like an outpatient. I mean, like this guy came in. His name is E.T. <laughs> That's all I remember. But he was like an angel. Didn't, I mean, he d did, he numbed it. Like, I'm scared. That sounds scary, you know, because like something going sounds scary. So, he numbed it. He did it. I didn't feel nothing after he numbed it. It was, it was the best thing that ever happened to me while I was there. I feel like that for sure. Okay, so, put me in a room. So, they're giving me the um, antibiotics, steroids through that thing, you know, whatever, whatever they wanted to do. They did it. They had me on oxygen in the nose and just a little cannula thing, which they sent me home with that. I haven't had to use it. So thankful for that. Okay, so I was in there eight days, I think. Um, in the course of that, I received five treatments of the nurse laughed at me because I can never get this word right, and it's probably not written down right here, but Remveridine? I don't know. That's probably not even close. Remveridine. That's probably not even close, but that is a treatment for COVID. Five, five of them. I, I don't know what, what it is, to tell you the truth. And I got plasma <clears throat> from people that had had COVID and gotten better, donated their blood, and saved my life, I feel like. Um, I did end up getting three units of plasma over the course of about four days. I think I only post was supposed to have had two, but Lord works in mysterious ways, right? Um, so I did get three doses of that plasma. <clears throat> um, so during the course of me being in there, I'm sorry if this is boring. I just want to tell my story and tell you guys everything that happened. During the course of me being in there, oxygen, you know, continually got a little bit worse. So instead of the little nose cannula thing, I was put on my face mask, which I'm claustrophobic anyway. I couldn't breathe. It was a nightmare. Um, so I was on that for a couple of days. And then they said, your oxygen still is not doing much better. We'll put you on different kind so they had a different one with a bag on it which they threatened me a lot with ICU they said if you're if your breathing doesn't improve we're gonna to have to put you in ICU scared the living daylights out of me because I'm like if I go to ICU I might not come out I didn't know it was scary it was so scary I didn't know if I'd ever see my family again. I didn't. I couldn't have any visitors. I thank God for all the nurses and doctors and just everybody that helped me. And all the prayers from all you guys. I didn't know if I'd ever be home again. I really didn't. You just hear so many things. I just really do. But I didn't have to go to ICU. I tried my best to breathing, just breathe, 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 one breath after another. Okay. So, I just want to say that Felicia and Kristen both got COVID as well. Um, Kristen's in the hospital right now. I hope it's okay for me to tell you guys. She's in the hospital. She had double pneumonia too. She just got put in last night. Felicia's doing good. She lost her sense of smell and taste, which I did too at the beginning. Um, Felicia's doing good. She's really about ready to go back to work. She's about to be released. She just needs her test to be negative. 
she's just waiting on her results. Okay. Life is really delicate. That's something I learned. It's really, really delicate. Like one minute you can just be, everything's gonna go, everything's great. And then the next second, you can't breathe. And breath is our lifeline, obviously. It's definitely our lifeline. Okay. So, I got to come home Friday. Today's Sunday. There's a lot of different side effects with this COVID thing. There's a lot of brain fog. I don't know what the technical term for it is, but there's a lot of brain fog. There's a lot of <clears throat> just different things like after all these steroids and stuff, my whole body feels numb. My whole body, my whole body just feels numb, like weird. But I'm, t I'm here and here, and that's gonna go away. Um, put on a little bit of makeup today, just so I wouldn't scare you too bad, cause I was looking a little rough. I know this video is kind of everywhere, but I just want to get all these things in. All right, so when they let me come home from the hospital, I'm still on steroids, which I feel like I've gained about 123 pounds while I was gone. My husband said I hadn't, but, you know, he has to, right? Um, I've been trying to do a lot of drinking, not, not drinking, drinking water, orange juice. I'm getting stronger every day. I'm breathing. Feels like from that little 10% I felt. I feel like I'm at least 50, which I'm eternally thankful for. I've got so many things I still want to do in my life. I'm not ready to give up by all means. They gave me this little thing here, which I love. It's some kind of little thing to help you measure your breathing, and they set it up here at 2,500, right there, 2,500. When they first gave it to me, you can only do a thousand. What you do is you just, just breathe in and constantly just work on getting your lung capacity back to where it needs to be. I can. Do now up to about 2,000. I'm going to work on it until I'm going to keep working on it. I want to do so many things. I feel like I got a second chance. Really. I'm sorry. Okay. So, I just want to say what my plans for the future are. First of all, A little type of funny thing, really, maybe. My mother in law said, When you were in the hospital, I thought you were gonna die. <laughs> Believe it to a mother in law to say that, right? <sighs> Just kidding. Um, yeah, I, I had my thoughts, I had my, I had my times being all alone, all them people. I just feel so bad for all the people that's in there. They can't have any visitors. And they don't know if they're going to make it or not. Anyway. My job at the chiropractic office. I'm not going to do right now. I'm not going to do. I'm going to get my priorities in my life right now. I need to get my strength back. I need to get me back. That's going to be a slow, methodical process. There's a lot of things that I want to do, need to do. <sighs> Made a little list. Some of my plans for the future. 
it's not really that big of a list, but to me it is because it's a second dance family. I want to concentrate on my family. I want to make their life as good as I possibly can. I want to devote my whole self to them and to what makes me happy. They make me happy. My YouTube channel makes me happy. It's, it's, uh, it makes me happy. Doing everything. Talking to you guys. You know, just having all you guys out there out, I know are, are friends. I feel like you are all friends and family. So, I'm concentrating on that. Um, home. I want to do my whole house. I want to organize. I'm just going to do everything that I've been wanting to do for all this time. But after working, you know, working, YouTube, and not taking care of myself, which needs to be number one. Um, yeah, so my concentration is on my YouTube, my family, myself, my home, you guys. Um, cooking and crafting that me and Felicia did. This is some of the best times I can remember. Just going down to her place and just doing that and I'm keep that up. We're going to play in lots of stuff like that. Just having a good time and living life to the fullest that I can in these uncertain times. Because these are uncertain times right now. They're so uncertain. Um... I just want to say a big thank you. I got a ton of cards here. I got a ton of friend mail. I've even got Dollar Tree hauls in my car from the last time that I went. I'll be bringing all that to you guys, slowly but surely, at my own pace. Um, I got Shop Miss A hauls over here. I've got so much friend mail and stuff, guys. I appreciate each and every one of you. We got friend mail from Jackie's birthday, even, which was... Back in October 18th. Oh, forgive me if I get that date wrong. Um, I got a lot of friend mail. I'll be doing that periodically too. If you've sent me anything and I haven't opened it yet, please forgive me. I don't like to do that. I know you guys send me that stuff. You like for me to open it and see what I got. And I'm always so excited. And I know I got Halloween stuff over there and it's okay. I'm still loving each and every thing over there. I guarantee you that. I'll be bringing it to you. I promise. I've got... Wait, i got it written down here. i got hauls. i got reviews. And... I think that's my paper, guys. So... I'm sorry this was very raw, but I just wanted to let you guys know. I know, yeah, my man, yeah, I probably look scary now. I tried not to, but I just wanted to let you guys know where I stand on all of this. It's, it's not over for me. I got another chance, thank God, and I want to do right, and I want to do good. I want to. I'm just, I'm just thankful for that second chance at life I feel like I do have. I'm not back to normal yet. And I know I still have a long way to go to get my energy and my strength back. But I'm going to do it. And I'm going to be the same gypsy that you guys knew and loved. I promise you that. I just want to say thank you to everybody that stuck by me. And who took the time out just to watch this video. And I guess that's all I'm going to say. That's, that's everything on my little list here that I've been trying to work on. And I just want to remind everybody how delicate life really is. It really is. Don't take anything for granted. Nothing. I'm so thankful to be home. I'm so thankful for my husband. He couldn't come and see me. It was so hard on him, too. He's doing good. He's doing good. 
everybody's doing good. Just please keep Kristen in your prayers, if you would. <clears throat> okay. So, I'm going to end this now. Thank you so much to everyone who listened. And thank you for everything that you guys have been to me. And I'm back. I'm back. A little slower, a little steadier. Don't give up on me. And I'm going to be here, okay? Alright, I can't do my infamous bye. <laughs> Not yet, but I will. Thank you guys so much. Bye.